Good morning, friends. I'm so glad to be here in your midst today, and I'm told that 10 colleges and schools have registered for today's program, and more are coming, and I believe we are expecting 15 institutes to be together today. So that's an excellent occasion for all of you to have co-learning experience, but also it, it is an excellent opportunity for me to reach out to the young minds. And so I want to thank the college authority of Petro College for giving me this wonderful opportunity. I am more privileged because today my good friend, Mr. Kosato Ato, Ato, can you just stand once? Yeah. He, he is my childhood friend. And also he was also an economics lecturer before. Both of us studied economics in Shillong. And we took mathematical tuition for two years. Because in those days, 10 plus 2 mathematics was compulsory to, in order to do to pursue MA economics. I don't know whether these days they have the same criteria, but we were very close and I feel privileged that he will be one of your judges for the beginning, I hope. And my colleague, Kelly, you have seen her taking photos. You will see more of her taking photos, I think. But I am privileged because my colleague and friend, Dr. Chukosala, I can't see her here at the moment, but she has been, I, I'm sure she has been one of the uh, masterminds behind a program like this. She, we work together as colleagues at the Entrepreneurs Associates for, I think, over two years. And we benefited a lot from her contribution and from her leadership. And so today, when your, the principal was speaking and reaching out to you, saying that you must become ambitious, you must excel in the world, and we cannot afford to relax, we cannot be lazy. I thought that's a great vision that an institute should continue to challenge the young minds. Some of you are from St. Joseph College, I'm told. So I think two months back or three months back, I had the opportunity to speak uh, with St. Joseph College students. And over the years, I think, I have actually spoken in a lot of colleges across Nagaland. There was a time when I was asked to speak in NSF uh, programs and um, Nagaland College Students Union programs, they were all good. But what I found was the focus, the attention was lacking. There are a lot of institutes where I've come to speak, but a lot of times attention becomes quite sparse. What I'm seeing today, I see that we have more attention. That is important because for a program like this, you may not get another opportunity to come and learn. And people like us, we will give you a different perspective. We will not give you a textbook perspective. And so, even though I know it is quite warm, I want to encourage you people to give your attention, not just to my talk, but to the program that is ahead of you today, giving your best, as our principal said, and learn from each other and grow and excel. When I'm, for me, I would like to focus on something called mindset. Because I have seen that mindset is the single most important factor to determine whether you are going to be successful or you are going to be a failure. I am aware that this program is being organized by the Commerce and Management Department, and I have been advised to speak on entrepreneurship, which in Nagaland context, entrepreneurship is limited to being a shopkeeper. And if I tell you to become a graduate, and end up as a shopkeeper. 
I don't think that's very attractive. If I tell you to become a trader where you employ two, three hundred people or one thousand people, that will not be too unattractive. But if I tell you to become a grocery shopkeeper or a second hand seller or a vegetable seller on the street or have two or three staffs and run a shop, I don't think you deserve that ambition. Number one, you must understand that entrepreneurship is not limited to street vending or a small shop. And that is why I think the whole Nagaland should change their mindset when it comes to the question of entrepreneurship. People say seeing is believing, which is true. You have seen the success of government servants. Again, what is success is very relative. If you think 10 crores is successful, then by being a bureaucrat, I think you can get that. We can have a house in Kohima, we can have a house in Dimapur, we can drive some nice cars. If you think 100 crores is successful, I don't think bureaucrats will achieve that. Not many bureaucrats can achieve 100 crores. If you think 1,000 crores is successful, then politicians will be out of the picture, bureaucrats will be out of the picture, and therefore, to see a 1,000 crore success, you'll have to journey outside Nagaland. Because in Nagaland, people don't know how to make money. The so-called rich knows how to make money by getting contract and supply, and perhaps getting side income from the government, but you cannot get 1,000 crore side income. And it's not going to be easy to have 1,000 crores income from contract and supplies. Many of the top Naga contractors and suppliers are not eligible for 500 crores contract at a time. So when we look at 1,000 crores balance sheet, we can't find in Netherlands. Why? Because we're not in business. If you look for 5,000 crore balance sheet, it's very difficult to find in Northeast. Because Northeastern people, they don't know how to do business. You know, when the Britishers came to Dick Boy, and Dick Boy, by the way, is Naga Hills, under Naga Hills. 1963, when Nagaland became the 16th Union of India, a lot of Naga territories went to Assam. You know, by what? Under the point, for 10 years, Assam police was supposed to take care of the Naga reserve forests. But after 10 years, it never came back to Naga. And those are all oil fields today in Assam. So you can read your history, it's fascinating. But when they were asking people to dig for oil, Britishers, they were saying, dig, boy, dig, boy, dig. And the name became Dick Boy. <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. and British came here for oil, for tea. And who were drinking tea? The guys were drinking tea. But we don't know how to sell tea. We know how to make tea and push it again in the bamboo, under the, inside the bamboo. Yeah. Story for five, six months. Strong tea, but we don't know what is orthodox tea. We don't know how to manufacture tea. We only know that there was a tea called tea which we drink. The British made it a business. We don't know. I want to let you know our principal just mentioned about Manipur and Israel. How many of you would like to pack your things and go to Israel? I wish I were as young as you and I would go to Israel. You know why? About 120,000 Palestinians who are not coming to Israel anymore every day to work. And most of them work in the farms. Because Hamas decided to rape, kill, and behead children and burn people, there is war. Therefore, 120 Palestinians have lost their daily jobs. But it also means. 120 jobs are open now. And I've been to Israel on 
on the expenses and invitation of Israel government. And I know that is very safe. You, you can take risk. There is a word called by Chinese, the cold crisis as Ouija. We danger G opportunity. So in every situation, some people may take it as dangerous, but another will take it as an opportunity. You can start thinking. And if you want to go to Israel and make some living for four or five years, you can contact me. I might be able to give you some ideas. You know why? Because I have Israeli friends. But take it like Manipur. You know, because there is conflict in Manipur, there is going to be a new trade zone happening in Manipur from Tanapol district, It is now shifting to Amjon district. I don't know whether, how many of you have gone to Moray, but I, I've been following up international trade because I'm interested in business. In 2006, when I went to Natala Pass for the first time, when it was opened after 1962 Chinese aggression, the Chinese side had big enough road where two trucks can move at the same time. The Indian side, an army man had to call up one car at a time. If you have to climb 30 minutes, no car can come down. The road was so small. And so the Chinese businessmen came to sell their cigarettes, and I went to have tea with them. And they were distributing Chinese RMB, 5 RMB, 10 RMB, just to make us happy. The Chinese were selling from steel items to cigarettes and wine. The Indian side was selling only Bikaji mixtures. We had nothing to sell. For Naga, since we don't know how to do business, the Moray Trade Road does not appeal us. But out of Manipur crisis, a lot of things are changing. And you will see the change after two, three years. The same thing in Israel, a lot of opportunities will happen, although there is an amount of danger. That is what the entrepreneurial mind has to see. And if you look at the world today, the world's labor force is highly skilled. India's is not. And more so in Nagaland. What I like about Tetra College is Tetra College gives you a lot of exposure to a lot of issues. You know, in India, 94% of India's labor force work in the informal sector. Only 5% of the India's workforce is in the large companies, which is in the formal sector. However, for China, 54% work in large companies. It's just the opposite. India's is 5%, Chinese is 54%. And you look at the way Nagaland is being shaped up. So Nagaland's unemployment was shared by the state government some few months back. And the government says that 9.1% of Nagas are unemployed. Out of this, that was in April 2023, 70,000 job seekers have registered in the government system. 11,914 matriculates, 11,008 Plus 12 students, 9,219 graduates, 6,503 postgraduates, 1,722 tech uh, degrees, 507 diploma holders. Then the rest are below plus 8. 70,000 is really nothing. We, by 2023 statistics, Nagaland's population is 22 lakhs. In reality, I tell you, it is not even 16 lakhs. And out of 16 lakhs, 
we have about 140,000 Nagas employed in the state government. Out of 140,000 Nagas employed in the state government, I doubt if 30,000 are actual workers. The rest are all on picnic. And therefore, if you want to face your future with the Nagaland state government culture, which your parents, your family, your church, your society will be advising you, you will not be able to excel in the world. And so what do we need to do? You must change your mindset. I'm sure you all have heard about Jack Ma, isn't it? So there was a time when I was having dinner with Jack Ma, and I thought, after the dinner, I will take some pictures with him. And I realized he's quite a short person, but while I was busy taking photos with somebody else, he sneaked out. But this person is somebody that I actually admire as well. And he said, just before he came out of the public space, he said, work 996. Nine to nine into six days. And years ago, I think it was in 2017, there was a comparison study why Chinese can manufacture cheaper stamps and why America cannot. It was, I think, in uh, the Fortune magazine. And it said why the Chinese executives would leave the workspace only at about 11 p.m. and come back at 7 a.m. in the morning. And so the journalists began to ask them, are you paying extra? And they said, no. Why aren't you charging extra? No, I was supposed to complete my work. And since I couldn't complete, I stayed back. And I came back early because I need to finish it. It's my work. And she said, if that was in America and you're not paid more, you will be sued. The company will be forced by the court to pay you. And that is why she said, this is the reason why Chinese can manufacture cheaper. So for Chinese to be working 996 is normal. But for Nagas to work, what? Nagas to work from 11 to 2, 11 to 3 is difficult. If you reach your government office before 11, that is a duk paise. If you are still in the office by 4 p.m., I give to please duk paise. And if you work for five days, then you may think that God is cursing you. <laughs> but if you don't go to your station, and if you stay at home and draw your one month salary, your church also will pray for you because you are paying tight. We, so unless we change our mindset, if you think that this is the model of development, no. I see that your college is excellent. The space is like a corporate space. If you come and see my home in Kohima, it's 100% built by Chagas House. The new house that I'm building is also 100% by Chagas House. Seven graduates are my mysteries. I have drilled into them that being a constructor is not a shame. You know why? In 1992, when I was 19 years of age, I worked as a porter in Kohima, and I realized it's very enriching. I went to college and did my admission without asking any money from my parents, because I was ready to work. Who says? Work is a shame. There is dignity in work. How many Nagas, how many young people will be willing to do that? In India, if you're born in the lower caste, you remain a lower caste. And that's the saddest part, I think, about Indian social structure. But in Nagaland, you don't have that. You can do any work provided you have the right mindset. And I want to tell you, that Northeast has the biggest opportunity in India. You know why? Northeast area comprises 8% of the total geography, but the population has only 3%. Only 3.3%. And Northeast has got 
eight percent. Its northeast territory is ninety-eight percent international boundary. But for us, international boundary has no meaning. You know why? We don't do business. For us, government job is what we want. We are very close to Uttar Pradesh. We are very close to Rajasthan. And I will tell you why we are close. In 2018, in the month of August, there was an advertisement for 62 posts of that messengers. Sixty-two posts in UP. And what is the criteria? Studying up to class five. Then another criteria should know how to ride a bicycle. Only those criteria. Because it's that messenger post. And you know who, who applied? If you read Economic Times. 30th of August 2018. It says that 30th, 62 posts in UP Police Department, 3,500 plus PhDs applied. 3,500 PhDs. Over 550,000 graduates applied for 62 posts. 28,000 plus postgraduate students applied. And when I read that, I said, India is mad. What can I define? If this is not called mad education, it's mad education. If all of you graduates start thinking that you can do only beyond job, that a police constable is the best job that you can think of. I know we need good police constables. I know we need good peons, I know we need good chocolaters, good sweepers. But if you reduce yourself to that, I don't think the education has done justice to you, nor you have done justice to yourself and to the education system. If you think in Nagaland, there should be 70,000 unemployed. I'm telling you, you are the problem, not the government. Many people ask me, when I was still below 25 years of age, and I could still apply for government job. Especially my relatives who felt sorry for me. They used to ask, why don't you sit down for a government job? And you know, I was one of the top MA economy students in Nehru. I was the top in Patai Regime College, top in my former graduation. Political science highest, economics highest, history highest. And in the school, I was quite good to such an extent that I got double promotion. I'm not trying to boast about my achievement. I'm simply saying that I was a serious student. And so it was normal for my father to think that I will come in with annual 10th woman vehicle. This morning, two NCC students led me. It's very good. Through MCC Airwick, I passed pilot attitude battery test. And so I was trained to be a fighter pilot. Every day in 1992-93, the Air Force was paying me five rupees. And five rupees would give me one cup of tea, two singulars for one plate of three, which is enough for my breakfast. Every week, one sabun, life, life work, was given to us. We were trained. And I, I decided I will not take a government job because I realized that Nagas need to learn how to do business. And so for me as a graduate, to think that government job is the only job available for me, it's an insult to my education. And today what I see is if you think that you are unemployed, although you're educated, you have yourself to be blamed. This is the challenge that India needs to give to them to their kids. When I was asked some 10 years back to speak to the so-called elite students in IIM Kolkata, they brought them from all over uh, the institutes in Kolkata, I challenged them the same mindset. India is not poor because India does not have resources. India is poor because of mindset. Suddenly, if a lower caste come to your place, 
if you have to go and wash yourself with milk. In this 21st century, how can you run a country? In 21st century, if you believe that drinking cow urine can kill you from coronavirus, what can I do? It's, it, it's your mindset. And that is why we have 28,000 first graduate students applying for 62 posts in UP as messengers. I hope you people will not start applying for a sweeper post after graduating from Bachelor College. The teachers are not your problem. You are the problem. Change your mindset. I will give you another example of Rajasthan. Rajasthan, 129 engineers, 23 lawyers, one lawyers, one chartered accountant, and 393 PGs were interviewed for a PM post. For 368 PM posts in UP Secretary in 2015, this is so interesting. 255 doctors, 24,969 postgraduates, 1,50,000 graduates, and 250 PhDs applied for, 368 PM posts in UP Secretariat. I wonder what type of doctor degree they got. I wonder what type of PhD they got. It's crazy. We are making fun of the country's education. And no wonder in the last 25 years and more, not even one university in India has been in the top 100 universities of the world. And if that is so, you can imagine Northeast and Nagaland. Nagaland University, I'm sure, is doing their best. The last year, was it? Yes, last year, when I went to speak in uh, Ladakh, and there were some lecturers from Mizoram University, they told me that Mizoram University has some outside research works of about 935 crores outside normal budget for research works. And I said, then what about Nagara University? Nagara University have about five crores. <laughs> it's a joke. We get the point. Nagara University and Bizarro University are same, but they have outside normal budget 935 crores from government programs to do in university, Bizarro University. Nagara University has only five crops. Who is to be blamed? Do you think it's Vice Chancellor? Do you think it's Chief Minister of Nagaland? For God's sake, hell no. It's the teachers. And who are the teachers? You become the teachers. You, you become one day. But when we graduated, Nagas were fighting. I was given a lectureship because I had 55%. In fact, I have 59.7% in economics. And four posts were Kali reserved for workers. I was asked to choose which college I want to join. But after one, two years, Naga Students Federation wanted it to be relaxed to 50%. We compromised on quality of education. And suddenly we have lecturers who had only 50% of education. Who created it? Nagas created it. And so today, when you want to excel in the world, remember Jack Ma's talk, 996. If you are unable to work at that standard, don't ever go to US. Don't ever go to Singapore. And don't think of Israel. They will fry you alive. You know why? I was in New York. And there was an Asian lady looking, Asian looking lady, looking after the hotel where I was staying. It's a five-star hotel. And I was so surprised that there was only one lady. So I went to ask her how many rooms they had. She said about 480 rooms. And I couldn't believe she could handle guests from all over the world taking care of 480 rooms. If you go the same uh, hotel chain in, in Kolkata, you will find about seven, eight human beings staying 
standing to take care of about 200 customers. But that is not all. When I went to Regison Blue and stayed there in Maryland, there was one black lady who was catering to the whole restaurant. And I tell you, literally she was running, she was not walking. So I told my wife, look, this is why America is number one in the world. And it was cold, but she was sweating. One person handling more than 100 customers in a restaurant is not a joke. But they work very hard. If you go to the world with Naga mindset, that at reach the office by 11.30, have your Tamil by 12, and have your tea by 1, and by 2 you close your register and get into the department bus by 3 p.m. and reach your home by 4.35 and call it a day at GBC Dukpaje. You're not going to survive. Your mindset. I'm telling you, you're not going to survive. And so today, my message to you would be, there is a lot of opportunities in Nagaland because there are no actors. There are no performers. You can think of digital entrepreneurship. There's huge avenues out there. When we funded you know, e-commerce in 2014, no banks wanted to fund e-commerce in Nagaland. When we funded mass media, you know, um, in 2000, I believe it was in 2010, 11, no bank was willing to fund. When we funded hostel, creating it as micro-enterprise in 2004, 5, nobody understood that hostel could be a micro-enterprise. When I drove it, I saw few hostels. Because of the Triple H, a lot of micro-enterprises have come up as hostels. Look at your surroundings, and you will not regret. You know, Mexican author Gabriel Zaid, he said, wealth is above all and accumulation of possibilities. Think about possibilities. If you can think that you can be 10,000 crores, you will become a billionaire. And I tell you, I have met billionaires. Billionaires' lives and millionaires' lives are very different. Few millionaires have taken me to their homes to dine, and I have gone to millionaires' billionaires' home to dine, and going to billionaires' home is very different. From three days ahead, they will start asking you what type of wine you want to eat, what type of fish you want to drink, and you know what type of vegetables you want them to cook. It's quite interesting, but a billionaire does not have that time to ask you. The billionaire secretary keeps on asking me what type of clothes I'm going to wear and come. It's crazy. It's almost like a nuisance. But a billionaire and millionaire is very different. If you want to be a billionaire, God will make you to be a billionaire. But you have to pay the price. You cannot have the Naga mindset and say that I want to be 1,000 crore. You cannot be a Naga mindset saying that IAS is the ultimate dream. And you cannot be a billionaire. No IAS can be a billionaire. No IPS can be a 1,000 crore party. It's not possible. But if your dream is only IAS, IPS, NCS, and PS, so be it. Then you will be one. Then in that case, Nagaland will continue to have roads full of almost useless cars. Because that is our economy. You will not be able to drive in a, on a good road. Because for us, road does not matter. For us, monthly salary matters. So I want to tickle your mind to think about entrepreneurship. But if you decide to be an entrepreneur, don't think that it's full of roses. You will face failures. And failures is part of the journey. But I want to tell you, if you can develop a good business idea, today, India is no more India 30 years back. So also, Nagaland is no more Nagaland 30 years back. 
and the acceleration of change is going to be much faster. You know, in 1996, India had only 1,300 patent rights when IPR was just coming in. And by which time, China had already 21,000 patent rights. By 2003, a single company like IBM had 3,200 plus patent rights. By which time, India did not even reach, as a whole, as a country, did not even reach 5,000. And in 2018, India has 30,000 patent rights. And you know what about China? 1.4 million, which is 14 lakhs. And India and China's population is almost the same. China is more than two times bigger in, by, uh, than India by territory, but population is almost the same. So if China has 14 lakh patent rights, I, I would think India should also have at least 10 lakh patent rights. Not India, only 13,000 patent rights. Today, BGP government under Modi is talking about making India, startup in India, you know. And Atman Nirba, China doesn't talk about those things. There is nothing that Chinese will post, I'm telling you. They are very loud. You get into Bangkok Hotel and you realize there are a group of 30 Chinese. It's like that room. They are like that was Very loud. They laugh and keep talking, but they have money. Imagine the world of business. India's business cannot be compared with China. And there, it is quite fascinating, the Indian mindset. Because whenever I go to the market, when I say, is it made in China? They keep making fun of China, saying that the Chinese goods are not good. They don't understand the number one Chinese goods go to Europe and America. They second go to Asia, including some Asian countries. And the third grade goes to Africa, India, Bangladesh. Pakistan, Nepal. If you don't believe me, you can walk into it. One day you must go to China by any means. You must go. Why you must go? I was so surprised in 2017 when I went to China. There was no tree. And the next day when I woke up, there was a huge tree like that on the sidewalks. And I said, how come, who put it there? And the trees had sort of the drips on them. I said, why? They said, these are big trees uprooted, they have to be watered. And then I realized trucks were carrying logs with roots. And that is how they, they were planting trees. Magnificent. If that was done in Delhi today, it would be all in social media. They will ask who will take the best selfie with the big tree in Delhi. Just like there was a time when they asked people to take the best selfie with the the best selfie with a humble car. So I started asking, when did the buffalo become arrogant? If the cow is humble, then the buffalo has to be arrogant. But you see the Indian mindset and the Chinese mindset, for them they are doing it because they need oxygen. They need shame. There is not body to both. Don't think I am supporting China. I am a Naga and I don't like to be a Chinese. I'm simply telling you in China it looks like different. I didn't realize that in 2017, when I went to China, all the bikes in the cities were not petrol or diesel. Everything was on CNG. And they separate land for bikers, for cyclists. And I said, my gosh, all this time America has been telling you lies that Chinese are rotten people. This is so different. And they did it by, not by government job. They did it by business. Learn from your neighbors. They behave, they speak exactly like us. When I go to the restaurant, I like having bee, bee larvas. They have bee larvas. I like taking grasshopper. They have grasshopper. 
I like taking beef. Their beef, the ingredients they use are exactly the same ingredients used in my village. And I realize we are of the same stock, but our attitudes are world apart. And so today, if China rules the world in economics, for us, economics ends and begins only in government job. I want to challenge you people, young people, begin to think differently. You can think about agronomy, agri-economics. Why? Because in Nagaland there are no landlords, there are no monarchs. Everybody has access to land. But if you have been told that study hard, get good marks, and you will become an officer and live happily thereafter. But if you have been told you don't study hard, you don't get good marks, you fail. You will come and look after our cows and pigs and work in the field. Already a five-year-old child knows what is development, what is success, what is failure, and what is poverty. If you think agriculture is associated with poverty, you are wrong. I'm going to tell you one secret. We have a flagship called Trees for Wealth. And our target is to plant one billion fruit trees in Northeast region by 2050. And you know, at constant price of 2020, one tree at the rate of 1,000 rupees. I know some trees will give even 20,000 rupees. But given that, if this succeeds, we are looking at 1 trillion rupees. That is 1 lakh crore economy. 1 lakh crore annual economy. Can car factory do it? No chance. How many will be employed? 3 million. And on 11th of November, we are going to run for that vision. Some of you, if you want to come and run for that vision, please register and do come and run for that vision. And you can become part of our movement to own a orchard. You'll be surprised, one of our farmers, who is now 82 years of age, in 2020, during the peak of lockdown, I believe he earned about 14 lakhs by sitting in this village by selling nurseries, tree seconds. Our own office bought from him for more than 8 lakhs rupees. I, I'm sure that is better than a sweeper's post, isn't it? It's mindset. And since you are in India, you need to give organic food products to Indian cities. You will never have shortage of market. Talk about ginger, talk about anything. You will get money. Money is out there. Riches are out there. The only challenge is to change our mindset. And I want to challenge all of you. Think positive and start thinking how to get big money, not small money, because you all deserve to be very rich. I want you all to be very rich. I want you people to be employers, and I know everybody cannot be employers, that is okay, but everybody can be rich. And so I will share with you what Samuel L. Jackson said. He said, anyone who tells you money cannot buy happiness, never had any. So if you think money cannot buy happiness, then you know that that person had never had money. I will leave with you what proverbs. I like quoting Bible because I like reading Bible. Bible gives me a lot of insights. And Proverbs 18, 21, afterwards you can check it out. The tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruit. The tongue is very powerful. If you tell yourself that I want to be a government servant all the time, so shall you become a government servant. But if you tell yourself that I will be a billionaire, I will be a millionaire, and you keep telling that, you will find life. You will become a millionaire. It will not happen in one, two years. Probably not, because at the Entrepreneurs Associate, we called instant success as 10 years. 10 years is instant success. You cannot be impatient, but you have to be consistent. I don't know how many of you are following the Entrepreneurs Associates page. 
If not, please follow. Out there, you will not see a beautiful girl. If you are looking for those beautiful women, you will not find our page. But if you want to see creativity and drive, and some interesting thoughts, you will find that in our page. And it will give you idea what we are trying to do. If you want to see in our page, very highly educated people acting and doing works in economic development, probably you will not find in our page. You will find very ordinary people trying to make a difference and creating business ideas from simple ideas. So you can check on. And I want to tell you, the last point that I want to tell you is, you must find a good partner. One day you, sh you will all get married. And if you get a good partner, from that single decision of getting a good partner, we will determine 90% of your happiness and success. If you get the wrong partner, outside you might be smiling, but inside you'll be heavy. So think wisely, get your good partner and achieve. Why I say that? Because I realize these days, a lot of people, they become serious with each other by just on social media. And suddenly they realize, oh, it was a waste of time. Maybe some people got gold from social media, but you have to study each other. I studied my partner a lot, and my wife is a wonderful person. She was the first Chakasan lady to get top 10 in Madrid, then also in general category in Meghalaya. And I, why I say this is because I'm very selective, even with my friends. You will be surprised that my friend circle is very different. I have people who are 87 years of age, I have people who are in their 20s, but it is my choice. Choose well. I keep telling people, choose your partner very well. And the Bible also tells the same thing. Proverbs 18, 22. He who finds a wife finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. It's also the same. He who finds a husband finds what is good and receives favor from the Lord. Tomorrow you will all get married. When you get married, Remember, it's a blessing from God. Choose your partners carefully. And I tell you, I am also successful because of my wife. And I believe my wife is so successful because of me, because we complement each other. And mind you, today, she, your no, leader has said that I am getting into business. I am now getting into business. And after five years, when you meet me, you will not meet me in my same car. You will not meet me in the same status. If God willing, if I am healthy, I think I will be very rich. If you meet me after 15 years, I, I believe I will not be less than 1,000 crores balance sheet. But I don't, I'm not very sure, I'm not telling you now whether I can hit 10,000 crores balance sheet. And if you say, well, he didn't go, he went down the grave as a poor man, so what? I tried. More important thing is to try. I didn't try for NPSC. I didn't give 500 rupees to the state government for applying my job. You know, for NSSB, more than 50,000 people applied, applied, and to apply for that job, we need to pay 500 rupees uncle plus, which means the state government got 25,000 crores, not 25,000, 25 crores from 50,000 plus applicants because each one paid 500 rupees above for applying for the job. Why? Mindset. I'm not telling you don't apply, you can apply. But when I saw in my social media, after the exams, they said, oh, we did, we did do that, we did well. And when somebody asked the name of the governor, they couldn't remember the name of the governor. And I said, how did they pass civil exams? Their general knowledge is so weak. So if 
If others are doing it and you are doing it seriously, go ahead. If you're not serious, don't waste your time. I would suggest that you better go to Israel, get your passport, go to Israel and earn about two three lakhs rupees a month and come back and tell us the story about war. Because in Israel there is actually no war. Inside Israel, only the border has got some war type situation. Inside will not be. If you want to go to China to teach English, because you can learn good English, go and teach. China needs about 1 million English teachers. I don't know whether you are aware of it or not. Go and teach English in Thailand. Your beginning salary will be about 80,000 rupees. Go and teach English in South Korea. Don't go there to work in the hotel. Go there as an English teacher. And to become an English teacher, you have to work a little harder. You have to pass certain exams, but you have opportunity. And so today, nobody should give their name as educated unemployed. Change your mindset. And you will start seeing your world change. You will be exposing a lot of your talents. Unfortunately, I may not be able to see through it. But your talents should be able to give you money. If you have singing talent, make your singing pay for you. If you have an arts talent, make your arts generate money for you. Find out where you are good at and don't limit yourself to the herd mentality. Don't think that government job is the only and the best job in the world because your parents said so. What your parents know and what they are advising you is with the best of intention, but it may not be the best for your future. If they tell you that agribusiness is not what they gave you to study up to graduation, and they want you to come back only with annual 10, tell them that agribusiness also has got opportunities. If they tell you to be a trader, fine. But if they don't agree, tell them that in trade, there is also business. One of my friends, even in 2021 lockdown, from trading, selling basically garments, he caught in a gross sale of 11 crores in Liverpool. And so he resigned from his government job. I said, well done, congratulations. I'm so happy you finally decided to resign from this damn government job. And he was laughing, he said, yes, I'm, I'm grateful that you gave me the advice to resign. One of my doctor friends, he is a medical doctor and he resigned from his job, I think in 2022 last year, to become a fruit farmer. So change is happening in Nagaland. What I'm telling you, I'm not telling you in the air. I am actually seeing things happening. And there is so much opportunity in Nagaland. If you want to learn a trade, a scheme, which is going to give you success, please do so. Don't be satisfied with your general degree of being just a graduate. And don't let your mindset pull you down thinking that only government job is meant for educated lot. The person standing before you is somebody who has cleaned toilets. I was the first to sell ice cream in Kohima in 1992, and I did street selling in 1996, 97, 94, and I built a library by selling handkerchief and pens and cleaning toilets. There is money in cleaning toilets. Not now anymore, maybe, I don't know. But in our days, there was money because there was no truck car to come and clean the toilets. At night, we worked very hard. And in one night, we used to earn even 1,500 each. It was fantastic. When the Hajara was only 50 rupees, we were making money. And why did we make money? We were prepared to work hard which was looked down upon by people. If you learn how to do business, when the Entrepreneurs Associate started in Dimapur, 
only 5% of the market was engaged by Nagas. 95% of trade and commerce in Dimapur was handled by non Nagas because Nagas looked down on trade. Today it is changing. It's about 25% to 30%. When we started in 2003, we did a survey in Mokokchu. 75% non locals, 25% locals. For several, 70% locals, 30% non locals. Mokokchu today has something like 60% locals, 40% non locals. So there is improvement in Mokokchu. Kohima has got about 42% locals. When we started in the year 2000, they had only about 35%. Our educated, unemployed number is growing, but the Nagas share in trade and commerce is not growing as it should. Today in Kutsaro is the opposite. 90% local, 10% non locals And why is that so? Because there are very few Chakasans in government jobs. I want you people to think differently, change your mindset, and you will not regret. All of you will become successful, and none of you, by the time you hit 35 years of age, whoever is less than one crore rupees, crore patina, consider yourself as a failure in economics. You all deserve to be a property. And when you are a property, you will be driving a car which is 30 lakhs worth. I hope you will not buy a second-hand auto car from Assam and then fight in the battle streets. No, you deserve much better than that. But, and if you are in 20s, you have the best age to start. Change your mindset. And how can you change your mindset? Read business books. It will teach you. Make friends with business people. And I tell you, in the world of entrepreneurship, there is no competition. There is no lack of opportunities. Thank you very much. Good morning.